This tiny flea beetle may look harmless enough, but come spring and warm, dry weather, he and a few billion more can strip an emerging canola crop in days. Each year, Canadian canola producers spend tens of millions of dollars on chemicals to control insects that prey on tender young canola plants. Even with chemical applications, flea beetles still account for more than $250 million in crop damage annually. Most vulnerable to attack are the cotyledons, the first delicate leaves to emerge from the ground. They're filled with vital nutrients that help kickstart the young plant. If flea beetles get a foothold during this stage of growth, there's little chance the plant can survive. In the past, the only hope for canola producers has been to use pesticides. But escalating costs, chemical deregulation, and the long-term threat of increased health risks from contaminated air, soil, and groundwater has made the search for green alternatives that much more urgent. But now Saskatoon research scientists may have found the answer, a natural chemical-free way to curb flea beetle damage. Dr. Margaret Gruber manages the Secondary Metabolism and Development Lab for Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada in Saskatoon. In our experiments in the lab and field, we were investigating what flea beetles do on different types of plants and plant surfaces, whether they feed or they don't feed. And so for us, it was very exciting because we found that when flea beetles encountered plants with plant hairs, well, they just ran around on the hairs and then they jumped off and went elsewhere for a meal. And so that left our plant undamaged. For the past 10 years, Dr. Gruber and her team have been working with a plant called Arabidopsis, a close relative of the canola plant that has naturally growing hairs on its leaves. Knowing its genome, the scientists have been able to extract a gene that expresses hair growth and introduce it into a canola plant's genetic code. It's been a slow and meticulous process, but now, after many trials, Dr. Gruber says they're very excited about what they've found. When we transferred one of the hair genes from this model plant, Arabidopsis, into canola, we found a very exciting thing. Uh, the new canola plants had between 250 and 1,000 times the number of hairs on the young seedling leaves and stems. Creating a viable plant in the lab is one thing, but testing it out in the field against hungry flea beetles is something else. Dr. Julie Soroka knows all about that. As the team's leader in field trials, she's also an entomologist and the resident expert when it comes to flea beetle behavior. With the right combination of heat, sun, and a vulnerable canola crop, flea beetles can eat at a fantastic rate. We are monitoring flea beetle feeding on the hairy canola and traditional cultivars. We're observing their behavior, and if we notice that they avoid the plants, or if there is less feeding, or the feeding pits on the hairy canola, we know that we've been successful. Back at the lab, research technician Jennifer Holowichuk gets set to examine how the tiny flea beetles react when confronted with a hairy canola leaf. Here we have two young canola leaves. As you can see, the one on the right is the non-hairy control. The one on the left is the very hairy seedling. You can see how the flea beetles are reacting when given a choice, and they prefer not to feed on the very hairy leaf and will walk or jump off. News of these latest research findings has caught the interest of canola producers from across Western Canada. Any opportunity that we have to use green products versus the dangerous pesticides and chemicals, in my books, is a tremendous opportunity for long-term sustainability for my family and my kids' future. I would love to see that this uh, trait comes out in the canola, that uh, it's access uh, for producers to use so that we have the choice, I think, society as a whole would jump on this wholeheartedly because it's something that uh, just deters the, the, the bug uh, to go elsewhere, then we don't require the use of insecticides to control it. Well, as a producer, I think it shows a lot of potential. Um, anytime you can reduce your pesticide use and especially insecticides, I think it's well worthwhile. Um, being brought into some of the state-of-the-art canolas and that will certainly 
be a big boost for producers. Hey, Sean. Hey, Although there's much to be excited about with this latest research, Dr. Gruber says there's still some refining to do to achieve their goals. We're in the final phases of the research now, adjusting the genetic composition so that we can have a robust plant with consistent hair length and greater coverage over the seedling leaves and stems. And we're also developing resistance in the hairless cotyledons. And some of these new plants are in field trial this year. That's very exciting. And we expect to have a seed available for plant breeders to incorporate into registered varieties in about three years. That will be not only good news for Canadian canola producers, but a big step forward in helping make our environment a greener, healthier place for generations to come.